a lot about them. They know a lot about us. That's a that's a competitive, tough lineup that battles. We're clearly a little left-handed, heavy maybe on the mound, and that can be a tough matchup. But I thought every one of our pitchers today battled through it. Clearly, Georgia Tech was able to manufacture, and the seventh inning was difficult. Top to bottom in the lineup today. Very impressed with the at bats. You could tell the focus out of the gate all around was really impressive to me. The entirety of the lineup contributed. And that doesn't always happen, but you saw it today. Then you factor in the athleticism and the physicality of these guys, top to bottom, and defensively, you see the elite nature of what happens when we can get it going. So I'm very I'm very pleased with. The focus throughout the course of the game, these guys, they were, they were good at bats. These two clearly had several defensive plays. These two had key defensive plays. And I could go on and on about the defense. I think I think sometimes in our sport that gets tucked away, but it's not tucked away to me. You, you could go around that diamond, and everybody contributed defensively as well. Jamie needed to throw a bullpen today, and Mike and I went through every arm that we have on the staff and we do some homework on how we want to try to use guys. And the last thing he told me was, you know, Jamie's got a pen today and he wants to contribute if he can. And I talked to Jamie and it lined up. Sometimes going to throw a good bullpen in these settings when you don't have access to the mound in the field, other than the snapshot of pregame, can be difficult. So I think he threw nine pitches. He got to do his work. And then the result on the field was, was really good. Okay, questions? Yeah, uh, for both you players, I mean, Coach talked about the defense piece. Obviously, that really stood out today. The whole infield, you know, I mean, uh, really seemed like all over the place. You guys are making great plays, getting great picks at first base. How much have you guys drilled down on that? I know he talked about it in the ball, just how, how that was an area this team needed to improve. Can you got to take us through that, how this team has, has managed to take such a step forward defensively? Yeah, I mean, we, we do tremendous work on defense um, day in and day out. And we, we just take pride in our defense. You know, I feel like um, last year, I mean, we, we obviously didn't have the best defensive uh, percentage if, if, if you look at the numbers. But this year, we, we took a lot more focus in that. And uh, we take pride in in and out and the stuff before the games. So, uh, Cam, for uh, your first four at bats, I'm not sure about the fifth one, but all over 100 miles an hour, what was, what was helping you swing hard today like and, and, and get hits? Uh, well, I mean, I really don't think about swinging hard. I'm just trying to curl up the baseball and just get on base. Uh, I think nothing else matters except winning games. Like the numbers are done. It's the regular season's over. This is playoff baseball. Like we need to win games. The numbers don't matter. Like obviously, obviously Jamie has the stuff, but on top of the stuff, what is it about him that gives you the confidence to allow him to go out there for his first relief appearance of the year? And in the second part of that, you expect him to still be on a normal week going into Friday. This couldn't have worked out better in terms of the scripting of the week in terms of what you're used to doing. That's Tuesday, like Friday. So it lines up. So his work also lined up. He is a competitive kid and he thinks, and he has been in that situation before. Last year, there were times we used him out of the bullpen and he started a little bit early in the year and he's done it. So warming up in the bullpen something he's accustomed to it absolutely lined up do i do i feel happy that it got to that not really but he needed to do that today and like i said it's sometimes tricky to to get to that point we wanted him to face lackey i think we were at the nine spot and lackey has been really tough for us so, and we didn't want to flip it back around we wanted to try to record it out there before it flip back to the top. So that's why we did it when we did it. Clearly, I think Army could have gotten us through this, but the way that ball game was going, it, it seemed like the, the right thing. And he's a competitive guy. He told me in the dugout for the game, he's like, Coach, I got the ninth in. And he looked me in the eye, and he was absolutely 100% sincere with that. And it happened. <laughs> Drew, off, off the bat there in the eighth inning, did, did you think you were going to be able to, to get the, the runner on the tag? And it just as that play was breaking down, just how did, how did you see it? Um, well, at first I thought I was just going to have the out at first base. Um, and then it kind of just lined up to where I was able to 
to, to reach back and tag him out. And uh, Cantu made a great stretch at first on the throw. It was a little, um, you know, towards home plate and did a good job staying on the bag. For both of you guys, Cam, I think after one of your throws, you went up and, and that can't, uh, Cantu up as well. Just how big has he been for, for you guys as infielders just to have the confidence to to make any throw over to first base and he's going to grab it? Yeah, he's been huge. Um, I mean, especially in our locker room, he's one of our leaders for sure. Like, he's he glues us together, no doubt. Uh, he's an older guy. Um, he just wants to win baseball games, and, and that's why I was so excited because those outs are so precious, and we needed that out, and he, he did it. He did it. Get the next like, question, Evan. Like Greg. you guys haven't seen Virginia this year. What's your impressions of uh, of Virginia just from, from off the bat? Just dynamic offensive baseball, dynamic, threatening, dynamic, physical, athletic. That's what you got. Now I have not gotten deep enough into them to tell you the tendencies of the hitters and the arms that we might see. I just I just haven't gotten to that yet. But you know the identity of that group. They're extremely talented offensively. And a lot of stuff coming at you on the mound. So you have your hands full. I'll start to finish. I'll I'll know more tonight in the next couple of days as we dive a little bit Thanks. deeper. But it is weird to get to this point. And we play somebody four times in a row, and then you play somebody that you haven't played all year. So it's just unique. And I, I do like the format of this tournament. I, I, I think it. I think it gives everybody a roadmap going in. And, you know, I coach in the SEC. I don't know what they do now, but it used to be a double elimination, I think, 18 terms. So this gives you a little more scripted path, and I think it's better for these guys. And it gives us two days. So I like that. And they're, they're a tough team. How do you guys look at the matchup in terms of what it could be for potential hosts for a super regional top eight? Uh, you guys yeah. in Virginia seem like you're kind of right there and get the mix for that. Yeah, these guys have answered all year. It's it's tough, and we've had some adversity with some of the starting pitchers being down. It's hard to go through six weeks with two or your three guys that started on the mound for you out. We've had guys answer, and we've extended that bullpen. These guys have done so much to put themselves in position. The midweek stuff we deal with is really difficult to roll into those – Florida games three times in the JU games and the Gulf Coast games and the UNF games and the Mercer games. This stuff's Stetson twice. It's not easy. And the expectations when these teams roll in, like these are rivalry situations and there's no breathing room. And I'm the regional advisory committee member for our conference. So I look at the numbers and I read. It's top to bottom as good as it's ever been. And all of the people in the ACC can give you that data. It's really impressive. And the win-loss percentage and the road RPI and some of the things that go into telling you how good this league is, and it, it tells you that. So these guys have answered from pitch one. If you're going to be in this conversation, you got to do it from pitch one till the last out today, the punch out against L. Like, you've tried to put your, your resume out there, and these guys have done a heck of a job presenting our case with their, with their performance and their work. <clears throat> fourth, out, fourth outing for Connor since he's come back. Just how have you seen him build on each of those outings? Better each time. I thought the second inning the other day was better. And we had 35 to 40 on the card. And when we got to 33, I think, after the second, we had a difficult time figuring out whether you run him back out there. How far do you look into this tournament to decide what you want to do as this game unfolds? He clearly could have gone back out there. We wanted Abraham to start clean and Charles was going to be messy. And we had people that we thought were better off entering the game clean with no runners. And we thought we had a couple guys that could put out some stuff. And we got to the top and Abraham was ready to go. And if we all of a sudden get wet the 45 pitches, he's probably not available later in this. So now he is. So are you trying to build that pitch count or what, what are you trying to do? Those are, those are tough dugout decisions. And we felt like, that was time to, to let John go clean. That's all the time that we have. Thanks, guys. Right, Appreciate guys. it. Man.